Well, first of all, wish, wish everybody a very happy new year. I know this is a time for resolutions and what really are resolutions. It's things that we want to do in the future. So um, we're trying to be pretty obsessed with what we're trying to get done here in the next couple of days. So, um, but I'd also like to make mention of the fact that um, this has been a very good experience for us. The Sugar Bowl folks have uh, done a wonderful job, the city of New Orleans, and uh, everything has gone extremely well from an organizational standpoint, from our standpoint, and we certainly appreciate that. But, you know, we're here to play a game, and uh, our players have done a really good job of trying to prepare for this game, and we're going to continue to do that for the next 48 hours and hopefully um, be able to play very well in this game. Hey, Nick. Adam Kramer from Bleacher Report. Uh, Josh Jacobs, maybe uh, somewhat of an untraditional recruiting uh, trip to get to Alabama compared to some of the other backs. But what have you seen from him uh, in his first two years? Well, Josh has been a fantastic addition, you know, to our team. Uh, he's a great role player for us. A little bit different sort of back than the other guys that we have. Really change of pace guy. He's a great competitor, uh, very, very, very relentless in the way he goes about his work, um, plays a lot of toughness, a lot of tenacity. Uh, so he's always, you know, sometimes you look for that one guy that can give you a little bit of a spark, and I think when Josh came back healthy later in the season, uh, he certainly did that for us by the way he performed and the way he played. He's a very versatile player in terms of the kind of receiver he is, uh, inside runner, outside runner. Um, very, very effective player. Would you give an assessment of Irv Smith, I'm sorry, Daryl Williams, New Orleans uh, Advocate newspaper. Would you give an assessment of Irv Smith Jr. and his development from, you know, his freshman year to now and just his role in the offense and, and your overall impressions of him? Well, we're really pleased, pleased with Irv got to play last year quite a bit as a freshman. I'm sure that enhanced his development to some degree, but he's improved dramatically, um, you know, through last year to this year and probably one of our most consistent performers in terms of um, what we ask him to do. I think the role of a tight end has maybe changed a little bit in this day and age of football. Uh, they're kind of got to be on the line blockers. They're off the line sort of uh, fullback type guys and sometimes you ask them to split out and be receivers and Irv has done all three of those things very well for us and has played very consistently. Um, Rick Pinnell with the Charlotte Observer. This being the third straight year that you've played against Clemson, is there anything distinctive you notice about Dabo's teams? Well, first of all, I think Dabo is, does a fantastic job um, with his team. He's got a really good coaching staff. Uh, I think they're um, very innovative in some of the things that they do offensively. Um, which makes it very hard for them to defend. I think they do a very good job of utilizing the personnel that they have. You know, on offense, they're very talented on defense, uh, create a lot of problems for you, very aggressive in how they play. Uh, they've got some really good players, but those players play extremely well. And, you know, they're very solid on special teams and everything they do. So uh, when you look at their team, it's, it's hard to find a lot of weaknesses in terms of, uh, what they do and how they do it and the consistency that they do it with. So, um, you know, I, I just think this is a really good program, very well coached. Um, I think Dabo has, you know, great leadership in terms of how people respond to him, and you can tell that by the way his team plays. Hey, Nick Barrett, Salih, CBS. When you see Clemson this year on tape, what stands out about their wide receivers, specifically Hunter Renfro? Well, Hunter Renfro is, you know, a pain in the you-know-what in terms of uh, nothing different from last year to this year. Um, you know, the guy's very quick, um, very instinctive as a player, uh, knows how to get open, um, makes the right decisions. Um, really kind of a go-to guy for them on third down, um, especially in the third and, you know, four to six, seven range. 
So very, very crafty, very quick, um, but very smart in terms of how he plays. And uh, he's been really a consistent, effective, effective player for them. And I think, you know, when I made the statement earlier about how they utilize the personnel, um, that they take, to me, receiver core is a little bit like a basketball team. You know, you got to have a point guard, you got to have a shooting guard, you got to have a power forward. And I think that's one of the things that they do really well with their wide receiver core in terms of how they utilize their guys. And uh, they utilize him extremely well, and he's very effective in how, how he does what they ask him to do. Chris Lowe, ESPN. Nick, where has Jalen grown the most as a quarterback and a leader? I think Jalen has improved dramatically uh, from last year to this year. And I think his consistency and performance throughout this past season was um, a lot better, especially in the passing game. Jalen has always been a guy that, because of his athleticism and his ability to run the ball, has made a lot of plays with his feet. But I also think that uh, we've been able to help him develop as a quarterback in terms of his decision making in the pocket. And when he has done that well, uh, he's been extremely effective and he's been a little more consistent at doing that well this year. Uh, and we hope that, you know, that we'll be able to continue to build on that, you know, for him in this game. Uh, Coach Saban back here, uh, Aslan Hodges, CBS in Dothan, Alabama. Uh, Coach, the last month, obviously, very valuable to get these guys on defense healthy. But on the offensive side, have you seen uh, the development you'd want out of your wide receivers in the last month to give somebody to compliment Calvin on the outside? Well, first of all, uh, we have gotten a few players back uh, on defense, but we also lost Hootie Jones in the Auburn game, Sean Dion Hamilton, who was a signal caller on defense. Um, so lost Dylan Moses, who really kind of took his place. So we've kind of gained a few and lost a few. Um, but it's a new mix of people and a new chemistry of how those guys are going to work together in this game. And I think that's extremely important in terms of communication when you play against no huddle type teams. Um, offensively, you know, I think we have other weapons on offense that have made plays, whether it's Jerry Judy, Smitty, Ruggs, um, Robert Foster, uh, Cam Sims. Um, I just think we have to utilize those, those guys. Uh, and I think they're all very capable and we have a lot of confidence in them. So. Um, it's a matter of the quarterback developing confidence, making the right decisions, getting the ball with the right guys, and uh, that's something that we worked on very, very hard all year long. And hopefully, this over this time, um, it, it's going to show that we have made improvement. Nick uh, Nicole Auerbach, the Athletic. How after a game like last year's against Clemson, how many times do you watch the game, the film of it? Well, I don't. I don't know that. Um, how many times? I, I can't answer that. Uh, m more than I'd like, but um, and, and I think maybe in, to understand when you prepare for a game, it's not just about the game. It's the situations um, you prepare for a game. Uh, more like formation breakdowns. What do they do in these formations, these personnel groups, uh, these motions? Um, how are they different this year than what they've been in the past? And you take some of the things that happened in the game last year and some of the things that you got hurt with in the game last year and you kind of throw that in, in the mix and make sure that um, you're helping your players be able to play those plays effectively in the game. So anytime we play a game right after the game, we always sort of do, uh, here's the things that we did well, here's the things we could have improved on, uh, here's some game plan 
sort of uh, adjustments that we could have made or preparation errors that would help us play better. So it starts with that self-analysis a whole year ago. And then how do you answer those questions moving forward? And we obviously watch that game again. Uh, but some of those assessments continue to be the same. So it's a matter of um, you know, trying to fix those things and get the players to understand the issues and the problems and get tied together in terms of how you play the plays. To me, there's, there's a lot of quarterback runs. So you're basically playing a wildcat type of offense all the time with a quarterback who is able to throw the ball down the field. So that's a very challenging in and of itself uh, circumstance to have to deal with. Nick, uh, Will Pelagic, South Carolina Radio Network. Over here, Nick. <laughs> uh, as far as the success that you've had over the course of the last couple of years and teams trying to imitate that success, how do you think the growth of Dabo's program and Clemson, how does that growth mirror your own growth from when you guys started? Well, I, I don't really, it's tough to make comparisons. Um, I mean, I, I think they have a very successful program. They won as many games as anybody in college football over the last few years. Uh, they put themselves in a position to have a chance to win championships and have won championships. Um, and I think their team plays at a very high level on a very consistent basis. Uh, it's pretty obvious that they have a philosophy that they believe in, that their players believe in, uh, and they had a lot of success. So um, I, I don't like comparison questions. I don't think it's fair to answer comparison questions. We have a program. We have things that we believe in. Um, and, you know, we've had some success through the years as well. So the challenge is, is can you continue to get people to perform at a high standard um, where, you know, they understand the goals and aspirations that they have and the things that they want to achieve, and uh, but they also understand the things that they have to do to be able to achieve them, and they have the discipline to uh, do those things and execute those things day in and day out. And it's about making choices and decisions uh, to accomplish the goals that you have, uh, not necessarily what you feel like doing. And uh, I think their program probably has done that fairly well, but I think our program has done it fairly well as well. Nick, on your right, Kevin Skarbinski, AL.com. When you look at the players that you lost to the NFL from last year and the injuries you've suffered this year, is it fair to say that this defense may have overachieved so far this season? Well, maybe to say it a little differently, I would say we certainly had our share of challenges. Um, first of all, starting with the fact that we lost a lot of good players on defense, uh, had a lot of new players playing. Uh, those players developed, I think, very well. Uh, and then we had a lot of adversity to overcome in terms of some of the personnel, especially at one particular position, which would be linebacker. Um, and sometimes you can overcome injuries when you have one here, one there, to different positions because you have enough depth. But uh, it's, it's created some issues for this group this year, uh, and I think that they've handled it. I think our coaches, I think Jeremy and our defensive coaches have handled it really well in terms of providing the leadership to help those guys be able to go in and be effective in the roles that they played. So, uh, and it continues to be a challenge for us. Coach, uh, Mike Eggenheimer with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, you've been here before with Coach Dunbar. Um, you know, how is he been to, to add to your staff again and get to come back here? Well, I, I think Coach Dunbar has been a uh, very um, good addition to our staff. Um, very good coach, very knowledgeable, has a lot of experience. Uh, and I think he's helped some young players at that position develop to the point where they've been fairly effective players for us on a consistent basis all year long. Um, so. You know, he's been a really good addition and knows the system, knows how we want to do things, and I think has been fairly effective in, you know, getting that across to the players. So it's, it's been a good experience. Uh, 
Coach Aslan Hodge again, uh, WTVY in Dothan. Uh, does it matter how this team arrived at this destination and got here? And historically, you guys won the Iron Bowl, and, and most times the SEC championship game when you've played in a game of this magnitude, has that affected uh, the dynamic of practice and in preparation for the game? Well, I, I think that if you go back to when we lost last year uh, in the playoff, we made the statement that to the players that you don't want to waste a failing, that you want to learn from the mistakes that you made um, and grow from those things. And uh, I think our players did that throughout the course of the season. Uh, we didn't finish the season like we wanted to, uh, which sort of put our fate in someone else's hands. Uh, we didn't control our own destiny to some degree. But I think it's human nature that when you don't have success, people respond in a positive way uh, to do the things that you want them to do. Um, I think there's some things that are really important when you get to this point in the season, uh, which includes our last game that we played, is, you know, what do you want to accomplish and what are you willing to do to do it? And there's probably three critical factors in all that. You've got to be able to finish. I mean, you've got to be able to finish plays, finish quarters, finish games. Um, you've got to be able to overcome hard because every game that you play in situations like this are going to be a real dogfight. So if you don't have the mindset to be able to overcome adversity um, and get frustrated when things don't go well, uh, then you're going to have tough time in games like this because you're playing against good teams and they're going to make plays and you have to respond, you know, on the next play. Um, and everybody's got to take ownership for what their role is. Uh, what, what do they need to do to be uh, make an effective contribution to the team? And sometimes you have guys that uh, take ownership and just change the whole dynamic of the whole team because of the way they play, the way they compete. I think the 49ers quarterback is probably the most recent example of that. I mean, the guy goes and wins four or five games in a row, but not only is he a better quarterback, they're playing better defense, they're playing better on special teams because of, of what he's done to sort of impact everyone else to play at a little different level and a little different standard. I think it affects confidence and, and all those things. So, um, and it's not about what you feel like it's what you choose to do relative to what you want to do and I think that's something that we'll see when we go out there and play you know how our players really respond and uh, they've been good in practice uh, this group has been uh, really good in terms of the preparation for this game but we also have a lot of respect for the other team that we're playing uh, and we also know what how we need to finish how we need to overcome hard how we need to take ownership uh, if we're going to create the identity that we want to create in terms of this team, our team. Quick review, remember, 